So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. So just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to relax, I'm just going to tell a story in the background. And while I tell this story, you can begin to just comfortably drift asleep. And as you drift asleep, You can have a sense of walking through a forest one night. And it's a deep and dark enchanted forest. And through the trees you can notice spots of light flying around. Noticing the twinkling trails left behind those spots of light whizzing and weaving through those trees. That slight sound of buzzing as they pass near you, noticing that some of those creatures that pass you by have wings, and then recognising that they're small fairies that there are green fairies, purple fairies, pink fairies, red fairies, all glowing different colours, all seeming to go about different jobs in this forest. And as you continue walking through this enchanted forest, listening to the slight rustling and crunching sound of each footstep that you take, hearing the rustling leaves overhead in the trees as the wind blows a breeze, noticing the occasional shard of moonlight managing to pass through the canopy and dance in front of you, illuminating the occasional bit of dust kicked up in the forest. And noticing the flowers in this forest. That with the slightest touch of your feet, the grass seems to glow. And the breeze blows across the grass. And as it does, so you notice this wave of green glow passing across the carpet of the forest. Noticing some glowing purple flowers. And perhaps other flowers in this forest. And you can hear some of those sounds in the forest of different animals, aware of large deer in the distance, and you walk your way through the forest, you find your way out of that forest into a clearing, finding yourself in a clearing, in a meadow, up on a hill, and you follow a path out of the forest, down that hill, into a valley below, looking around and seeing the waves of green glow as the wind blows across the meadow, seeing the stars arching overhead.
seeing the way the moonlight is glistening on a distant river that passes through the valley. And so you walk yourself away from the forest, down that hill, through that meadow, down to the valley, walking down towards that river. And as you arrive at the river, so you have a kayak, that you left here previously. You push that out into the water, climb into it, and begin to paddle down the river. And as you paddle, you can hear the sounds of the oar in the water, on one side, then the other. and feel the sense of pushing yourself forward, feeling the way that kayak moves through the water. And after some time, you reach as far as you can go. You pull the kayak in onto the other side of the shore You disembark, drag it up onto the shore, and you continue walking along near the river before turning away from the river, heading up some more hills as the night continues on. And you head up some hills up near another forest. And you know this is where you want to stop for the night. So you set up tent. You make yourself a campfire near your tent. You light that campfire. You have yourself something to eat. And you sit down just in the doorway of the tent. Listening to the crackling fire. Noting the way the light dances around the grass. The warmth of that fire just warming your cheeks as you feel a sense of drifting and relaxing deeper and then resting back in the entrance to the tent gazing up at the sky and having this sense almost of floating out of your body of floating up into that sky, drifting and floating higher and higher, finding yourself absorbed in space. And while you're absorbed in space, so you begin to almost psychically or mentally travel through the stars. almost like travelling on the magnetic field lines and the energy that connects everything in the universe. Having the energy that makes up you travelling through the magnetic field lines of the earth into the magnetic field lines of the sun at the point where they interact and then at the speed of light 
traveling on those magnetic field lines all the way to the edge of the solar system and connecting with magnetic field lines from the galaxy and then beginning to traverse the galaxy on those magnetic field lines flying through nebula noticing the colors noticing stars springing to life like silent explosions of light and movement traveling near the black hole in the center of the galaxy noticing the way that time seems to stretch that the perception of everything stretches out curves around you that every moment in the past present and future is suddenly visible all at once and then traveling down into the center of that black hole and feeling a sense of time standing still almost like a ticking clock stopping and only noticing that it was ticking at the point it stopped only noticing that it was ticking at the point the tock stopped and finding yourself floating where there's no up, no down, no left, no right, no backward or forward, where there just is, where there's no sound, no light, just comfort, peace, And then in a flash, you find yourself in what looks like a universe that just doesn't look like your own. As if you've just come out of a portal through universes. And as you look around, so you notice how familiar it feels, yet knowing you've never seen it before. In the same way that you can see a forest, and it'll be familiar, you know it's a forest, but at the same time, you can know you've never seen that bit of forest before. And at the speed of light, you continue to explore with consciousness spreading, following the magnetic lines of different stars black holes, different galaxies, jumping from one magnetic field line to another, where you know you're traveling at the speed of light, and yet everything seems so slow around you.
and then you begin to get this sense that you've experienced this for a reason and you begin to wonder whether this actually is some kind of genuine experience not just a dream you laid down, you gazed up at the sky and then you started having this experience and out of curiosity you went with the experience in the same way that you can just drift into a dream. But now there's something about it that makes you question whether it's a dream. Because you find that you're approaching what looks a bit like a blue marble in the sky. And as you get nearer and nearer, so you notice how similar it is to Earth. And yet you're aware that it's also different. And you find yourself on that planet. And you land on that planet in a lush green area. And you look around you and it's lush, it's green. But you can't see any animals. And as a consciousness you leap off that lush green area. You focus on the idea of life. And you land in a desert. And you look around you, curious. You are focusing on life and here you are in a desert. And you can see a distant sandstorm whirling up and beginning to spread. You can see some mini spirals of sand dancing across the dunes and you travel across those dunes having that sense that you can smell water and you allow yourself to just instinctively be drawn to that sense. And while you're being drawn, a part of you is thinking it can't be possible because of all this sand. And then you see a single tree standing in the middle of this desert. And the tree looks so healthy and out of place. And you walk over to the tree. You touch the tree with your hand. You feel the bark of that tree. You tap on the tree. And you notice something unusual about how it sounds. And as you tap on that tree, you notice there's an area on the tree that sounds a little hollow. So you tap around that area, until eventually you notice there's an area to push on the bark. And when you push it, so an entrance opens and you see a spiral staircase leading down under that tree 
You walk through that entrance. The door shuts behind you. You follow that spiral staircase deep down under this tree. You notice the smell of water getting stronger and stronger. And find yourself in a cave system. And there are lights down here in this cave system. And there are areas where the cave is darker and seems to be just illuminated by glowing moss. And there's the sound of dripping, flowing, running water. And the murmur of life. And you explore the cave. And you find there's an entire civilization down here. And as you explore and discover that civilization, they're startled to see you. Because you look different to how they look. And one of them comes over to you and tries to communicate and you don't understand what they say. And so they start using gestures to try and explain. And you grasp that they'd like you to follow them. And you follow them to what looks like a palace with pillars outside that palace, holding up a grand ceiling. And you can see what looks like a painting on the ceiling that's perhaps telling the story of these people. And you walk in and your footsteps echo and reverberate around this palace. And you get showed to someone who looks like they're in charge. And this person comes over to you curiously. They greet themselves. And you don't understand what they say and they can't understand you. And then they direct you to a seat. They go to a small fountain of water. They get some of that water from that fountain. And as they bring it over, you notice that the water has an electric blue colour to it. And they offer you some of that water. And you take a sip. And they gesture to have the cup back and then they take a sip and then they put that cup down and they sit expectantly and watch and you feel that cold water pass down your throat down into your stomach and then you feel it spreading around your body and you feel a tingling Passing to your mind, through your head, all the way down to the tips of your toes. And you can notice that they seem to be experiencing the same. And then they open their mouth and start to talk. And you understand them. And you reply to let them know you can understand them. And they let you know they can understand you. And they tell you that this water from this fountain can connect all life, can help all life communicate with each other. 
and it only lasts while that water is passing through you. And they wonder where you're from. And you explain that you're sitting in your land, back on a different planet. And while you were back on that different planet, you started gazing up into the sky and somehow managed to get projected through space and time, finding yourself in another universe, finding yourself on another planet, finding yourself here. And then you were drawn in by the smell of the water. And they explained that long ago there was some big events that happened on this planet. Much of the water on the surface was lost. There are some places where there's still water on the surface. But much of the water was lost. And so they followed the water. And they built these underground cities in the caves where the most water was. And they sought out the healing water and followed the electric blue healing water springs. And they were curious why you would be here and while they talked, they gestured for someone to come over. They asked that being to go and get some drinks. And the being came back with what you would describe as perhaps a teapot and some cups. And they poured some glowing, warm, green drinks. They took a drink of their drink and gestured for you to do the same. And as you put it near your nose, you could smell how sweet it smelt. You took a sip of it and could taste that sweetness and feel the warmth and that warm tingling that seemed to pass through your body, up the back of your neck and through your head, and around your cheeks, and then down to your fingertips. And then a sudden wave of deep relaxation. And you didn't know why you were here, and neither did they. But somehow your two worlds have been brought together. And you communicate for a while longer. Before they say they've got something for you. That they just feel that this is something you should have. And they don't know what you'll do with it. They don't know whether it's something you can take back with you. But they want to give it to you anyway. And they go and grab you. The most beautiful, perfect glass. And you would describe it probably as a wine glass. But they give you that most beautiful, perfect glass. And they tell you there's more to it than just being something to drink out of. That when they found this place and they set it up, the first two people here drunk from this glass and one just like it. 
and they've never met anyone from another world. And they've saved these two glasses as a symbol of keeping the civilization going. And they feel this event is equally as big. That it demonstrates there's more out there than just the life here. And you wonder if there's anything that you can hand them. And you know that you're only here really as consciousness. And yet you feel physical. You feel around your pockets. And you find a silk handkerchief. And you know that you had that on you while lying down at the tent. And you don't know if it's even real being here as consciousness. But it is in your pocket. So you take it out your pocket. And you hand them that silk handkerchief. And they feel how smooth that is. They notice the way that it moves in their fingertips. And it's lightness. And you find your way back out of the cave system. And head back out into that desert. And as you do, you begin to think about going home. And you find yourself making that journey back the way you came. Passing back through space and time, back through that universe. Back towards where that matter seemed to be coming out of. You find your way back in. And for a time you're in that space where there's no up, no down, no left, no right. No backward or forward. No sound. Just peace and silence. And then after a moment. In a flash, you find yourself back in your own galaxy. Travelling through your galaxy. Feeling drawn home. And then you can see that blue marble. You hurtle towards the blue marble. And then slow down and you can see yourself down there. Relaxing. Gazing up into space. And you float down into that you. And just as you do. That glass falls from your hand onto the grass. And rolls a little bit on the grass. And you suddenly become aware of being you there at the tent with the crackling fire, the dancing light, the stars overhead. And realise you've got the glass with you and you check your pocket and realise you don't have your silk handkerchief. And the experience is a little confusing. You don't know how you did that. Whether you could do that again. How you left your body. While still being connected. To your physical body. Almost like somehow. You travelled. As a physical being through consciousness. And while you wonder about that, you hear the distant grumble of a dragon flying 
overhead. The pounding of its wings. You wonder whether it's finding somewhere. Safe to go, perhaps aware that the weather's on the turn. You then hear the distant rumble of thunder. And you can't see any rain. And you can't notice any clouds in the sky. But you can hear the distant rumble of thunder. And then as you continue to relax, you notice the sky in one direction, occasionally flashing with some light, before hearing that low distant rumble of thunder. And you have this sense that you know that there's a storm just gently working its way in. And you feel like it'll be perfectly fine. You know there are much taller things around you. You are nearish to the tree line, but not in reach of any falling trees and hopefully not in reach of any jumping lightning. And all the trees are much taller than you are. And you're aware that your tent is perfectly fine in thunderstorms. Its ability to work like a Faraday cage if needed is one of the reasons why you chose this tent because you're always thinking of any eventuality. It's always best to be prepared. And so you know that you'll be able to just relax back in the tent as that storm gets nearer. And you'll be able to just enjoy the storm passing over. And you've been gone for a few days out on a journey over to the most enchanted forest. You had to go and meet with a wise person in that forest. And now you're making your journey home. And you enjoy this land. So you don't mind taking a few days and relaxing and ambling your way home. And then you notice a large raindrop splat on your head. You know that those clouds are now getting closer. And so you tuck yourself away in the tent. You seal up the tent. You relax back so comfortably and peacefully in that tent. The glow from the moon on the outside of the tent gradually fading as the clouds move in. As you now hear the larger raindrops hitting that tent and then that rain gradually getting heavier and heavier on the outside of the tent. And you lie back in that tent, beginning to drift and float asleep. And you try really hard to stay awake, to try and hear and enjoy the sound of that rain on the tent. To hear and enjoy the rumble of thunder. And you notice the way the thunder is the kind of thunder that just rumbles gently and deeply rather than cracking loud. And you notice flashes through the tent that illuminate 
the raindrops on the outside of the tent and the rain that's running down the tent. And you enjoy the sound of that rain outside, finding yourself unable to keep your eyes open, almost like the rain is hypnotic, that the pitter-patter of that rain is somehow guiding, relaxing you asleep deeper and deeper. And while it does, you find that you drift into a pleasant reverie. You drift into a pleasant dream. And you wonder what the dream means. You dream of being at home, watering your plants. going into the living room, your dog running up, excited to see you back in the room, as if perhaps you've been gone for days, when you just went outside and watered some plants. And you stroke the dog, and pat the side of the dog, and sit down and relax, as they rest next to you, resting their head on you, feeling the warmth of their body. With your hand resting on the side of their chest, aware of their breathing in and out. And just gazing out over the back garden, through a window. And you dream about being at home. And you think this is a nice, relaxed, mundane dream. There's not a lot going on here. And then you notice the tree at the back of the back garden and realise that the leaves on the tree turn into small flames and then that spreads to the branches and it spreads to the trunk and then that tree and the trunk shrink down to ash And you stand up and go to the back window and you gaze out over that garden, seeing that tree burnt down to ash, noticing those embers at the back of the back garden, the occasional flames dancing up, the glowing of those embers, the dark trail into the sky from the fire and a slight movement among those embers and then noticing a golden phoenix rising up out of those ashes launching itself up into the sky flexing its wings, flapping them and then flying off. And with that, you wake up in that tent and realize that it's morning and you can hear songbirds of the morning. And you can notice the way the sun's shining on the outside of the tent. And as you open the tent, you can notice the mist across the grass as the sun is warming the rain from the night before and it's evaporating 
You pack up the tent, you continue your journey home. You walk down to the village. And as you arrive at the village, people greet you, welcome you back. People seem excited to see you. You make your way home. Your dog is excited to see you, wagging their tail, jumping up at you. You put your things down. You make yourself something to drink. You sit down and drink that drink. And as you do, you gaze out into the back garden and notice that the tree at the end of the garden has disappeared. And you walk down to the end of the garden and you just see the ash at the end of the garden. And you realise that it was more than just a dream. You can see the signs of where that phoenix rose from the ashes. And you become aware that there must have been a phoenix egg in that tree. That phoenixes lay eggs. And those eggs grow larger over time. But they lay the egg within the base of a tree. And the egg as they lay it is squishy and so it squeezes into a tree and then it starts to solidify and it takes years for an egg to develop and as the egg develops so the phoenix inside the egg grows larger and larger and then when the phoenix is almost at the point of bursting out of the egg, it begins to warm its body up. And that warms up the surrounding shell. And that shell warms up the tree until it reaches a point where that warmth begins to initially start spreading through the tree until the tree begins to combust and almost just burst into flames. And then those ashes free that phoenix to burst out of the egg and go about its life. And you'd heard about Phoenix being able to almost create a psychic connection. You wonder if somehow your experience has created a connection with that Phoenix. Maybe there was still some of that blue water within you. And you head back into your home and you get a book off the shelf and you begin to research about phoenixes and you learn that what you thought of as an egg is more like a cocoon that's formed around that phoenix. And you continue to read and learn. And you find that being long term in the psychic area of a phoenix creates a connection. That while they're forming, 
the sending out and creating a lot of energy that's what's going to set fire to the tree but in doing so animals that have been in their area receive a warning of this for them to keep away from that area and you realize that all your time living with it in your back garden it must have created that connection and perhaps triggered your experiences and your ability that until last night you didn't know you had. And the wise person that you'd been to see was about a completely different issue that you'd encountered. that you'd been having a problem in your garden with some rogue fireflies and so you'd had to travel to the enchanted forest go and see that wise one to receive something from them that would help you to deal with the fireflies and you were told that you needed to hang a braid of hair in the tree in the back garden and that that would make the fireflies stay away as that braid of hair flaps and moves in the wind but now the tree isn't there but you go out into the garden anyway And you hang a braid of your hair near where the tree once stood. You don't know if the fireflies will be a problem again, or if perhaps they were just disorientated by the heating of the tree. And you spend the rest of your day with the dog. You make the most of the day having not seen your dog for a while. You sit in your garden watching the birds in the garden, the butterflies, other insects. Enjoying a drink in the garden And as you relax in your garden, so you start to contemplate the meaning of the experience. You'd read in the book that a connection is created between you and that phoenix. and that the phoenix will be back and you know that phoenixes are rare that any one phoenix is only around in one area for a while they keep distance from each other it takes years for them to be born and so you wonder whether that phoenix will be back and if it will, what your experience will be. And as night draws in and you can see the moon rising in the sky and the stars in the sky. You sit in your back garden. You have a drink out of that glass, gazing up at the sky, thinking about 
those other aliens out there, those other beings out there somewhere, in an entirely different universe. Wondering whether you'll be able to replicate whatever it is you did before. Perhaps even take control of that ability. And learn how to do more with it. And learn more about it. And after you've drunk that drink, you wash up the glass. You head up to bed. The dog comes up with you. Dog gets into its bed near yours. You head to bed. You begin to drift and float comfortably and relax to sleep. And as you drift asleep, so you drift deeply and pleasantly into a dream and notice that. This is the first dream of many that seem to bring so much pleasure and deep comfort and begin to teach you how to use these skills, how to focus on these abilities. And you begin in each dream to realize that subtle connection with the phoenix, aware that it's trying to communicate with you from afar and that it will be back, and that you know you'll see it again, you'll use these skills again. And you know that you and your dog will probably have to go on many adventures through this land. You just have this sense that there's more to come. As you comfortably and deeply drift asleep.